Most people know that I get threatened a lot on this channel. People don't like it when you expose them. I suggest you use the money you got from pumping your Patreon to hire a good lawyer. You're gonna need it. So scammers saying that they're gonna go after me is something that I've long been desensitized to. Coffeezilla, nobody knows anything about his family because they don't have the resources I have. But what we don't talk about a lot is that the opposite is also true. When victims of scams learn what's been done to them, the scammer very often becomes the target of a lot of personal threats. And honestly, most of them seem to take the same approach I do. You unfortunately have to ignore it. Because 99% of the time, internet threats are just that, threats, which never go beyond the screen. But this video is a reminder that every now and then, someone will take it all the way. We're talking today about Aiden Platersky, a scammer who taunted his victims with flashy cars and took their money until it was too late. And he was kidnapped, beaten, and ransomed for $3 million, leading up to this video, which I will warn you, may be disturbing. Everything that happened is my fault. I'm not gonna put the blame on anybody else. I'm not gonna try to put the blame on anybody else. I feel humiliated, I feel disgusted in my actions. I feel disgusted in what I did. After 2021, I feel like a lot of it was illegal. All these guys that are owed the money, I'm gonna do what I can do to make it right. I'm gonna call each and every one of you individually. What you just saw is a man who used to be called the Crypto King by Forbes.com who took in $40 million via a Ponzi scheme and never repaid his victims. In this video, he appears to be apologizing for those actions, but now that he's free, he says he had no choice. Now, we first learned about the kidnapping back in March when Aiden Platursky's father claimed that Aiden was kidnapped. But many people, including myself, didn't really know what to make of these claims because no evidence existed besides an interview, which was filed in court. The father says that his son was taken. They basically held him for approximately three days, drove him around to various parts of Southern Ontario, beat him, tortured him, allowed him to make specific phone calls. Approximately two or three days later, he was released with the threat that he needed to come up with some money fast, specifically $3 million. But this week we found out that this kidnapping was very much real and that five men were arrested and charged with kidnapping. And we know that allegedly one of the kidnappers, Akil Haywood, actually knew Aiden quite well because he invested with him. Court records show Haywood lost more than $700,000 investing with Platursky. And in another twist, he was appointed as an inspector in Platursky's bankruptcy proceedings. That's right, one of the kidnappers was one of Platursky's victims who presumably watched him post luxury cars and private jets to social media until he had had enough. And as one of the bankruptcy inspectors, he had access to special kinds of information about Platursky, possibly including the fact that some of the trustees thought Platursky was hiding assets. Do you believe that he's hiding assets from you? I have reason to believe that he is still hiding assets, yes. So Haywood likely knew Platursky wasn't sharing everything and likely knew other people in the case were hiding information too, like Colin Murphy, one of the fundraisers for this Ponzi scheme. In January, he wiped his phone of all the data which he was asked for, uh, and he had a very bad explanation for why. Did you wipe your phone before, you know, knowing that they needed me? <sighs> what was on it. I keep uh, super sensitive stuff on there with my girlfriend. And um, it's funny because uh, this Norman Groot guy, he wants, uh, he's saying, oh, I'm hiding this information and blah, 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 blah. And he doesn't realize that I've been like, I've been keeping stuff uh, to give to somebody. I just didn't know if he was the right person. Ah, dang, I was about to give you guys all the evidence. I, I was trying to get it to you. And then I, I swiped my phone for no reason. Um, yeah, this, this may be one of the most transparent ways to hide evidence, wipe it before and go, I had a girlfriend, guys, can't hold me accountable. And my point is, these details suggest that Haywood might have believed that Platursky was hiding assets that he could get that the court simply couldn't. Although it's worth saying, I'm definitely not defending what Haywood did, kidnapping him, because not only is it completely wrong, it quickly came out that Haywood isn't some misguided vigilante for justice or something. Uh, given what he did next, he seems about as horrible. Haywood is also charged with threatening an official from Grant Thornton, who's overseeing the proceedings for $2 million in cryptocurrency. The accounting firm said Haywood resigned as an inspector. Grant Thornton said, We've been cooperating with police and have maintained open lines of communication. We cannot comment any further as this is an active investigation. Wow, you heard that right. Not only did Haywood threaten the scammer, 
He threatened the bankruptcy lawyers in the case and wanted a bunch of money from them, which is really playing both sides in a creative way, I've got to say. And my point is, look, it's not like he was looking for the amount he was owed, which is allegedly $740,000. He was looking for millions of dollars as a payday. So no one in this situation is particularly great. And of course, since then, him and his co-conspirators now face kidnapping charges. But what I do find very confusing is that all of the crimes being passed around here, like a game of hot potato, the one person not being criminally charged in this situation is Aiden Platursky himself, the original scammer in this whole situation that started this all. He lied to all those people, said he was this great uh, cryptocurrency forex trader, allegedly stole tens of millions of dollars, spent most of it on cars, private jets, and expensive houses, and he's not being charged? Like, I'm so surprised by this. This case is very reminiscent of another story that we've just recently did with Ted Safranco, who promised these amazing Forex trades, but just ran a big Ponzi instead. And not only am I surprised by the size of these Ponzi schemes and that Platerski did something very similar. He invested only 2% of the 40 million he took in, but I'm also surprised by how blatant of a fraud this is. And incidentally, the similarities don't stop there with our last story. Remember Ted Safranco claimed he was also attacked by would-be creditors. And so this pattern of crypto or Forex scammers isn't going away anytime soon, nor are the legions of upset victims who are pissed both that they got robbed and that most of these people face little to any criminal charges. And so it's easy to see why they're frustrated, although I have to say that I disagree with the method. Kidnapping someone who scammed you and ransoming them for money in some kind of scammer uno reverse card is not a good idea and getting an apology from them when they, you've beaten them up isn't doing anyone a service so for ethical reasons human reasons and stay out of jail reasons maybe don't do this don't do it sounded a little half-hearted coffee what's next please drink responsibly uh, i don't know i constantly get threats so i sympathize with the guy and don't do it is the right answer, but I don't know. But what? Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I get it, I guess. I mean, it's wrong, but I get it. But it's clearly wrong. And look, Haywood sucks, but I get wanting to screw the guy who screwed you. But I can't say that because it, it is wrong and the impulse is wrong. And I didn't want to put this in, but like this Aiden guy is horrible. I went to his Instagram to reach out for comment and I saw what he's posting. It's all, you know, supercars, private jets. It's a middle finger to all the victims. And if I lost money to that guy, I'd be pissed too. Wow, Coffee, you got an edge. I didn't think you had it in you. No, I mean, I wouldn't do anything and I wouldn't change what I said. Don't do it is the right thing, but sometimes the right thing feels... What, hopeless? Inadequate, Sisyphean, pointless. This conversation is pointless. I'm, I'm done talking about it. Look, uh, you got anything on TV? Uh, I hate when you put my show on. Come on, change the channel, put something else on. Oh, sure. Speaking of new topics, I've got just the thing that'll cheer you up. I found this new creator. You're gonna love this coffee. Very avant-garde stuff. I'm telling you, future of entertainment. Quack, 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 quack. Gang gang, gang gang. Mm, ice cream so good. Balloon. I'm pretty great, huh? <sighs> oh, thank you, what am sir. I doing what with is my the life? noise again? Quack 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 quack.